and welcome to Senior Centers in Action. I'm Carla Schaefer. Well, spring officially made its debut in March, but the month still brought us some unusually cold and occasionally snowy weather. But it wasn't enough to interrupt too many of our Senior Activity Center events, including the Annapolis Senior Activity Center's Games at the Playground and the Taste of Maryland presentation at the Pascal Senior Activity Center. Besides spring, March also brought us Mardi Gras and St. Patrick's Day, and many of our centers held their own holiday celebrations. The month kicked off with Mardi Gras, and we started the party at the Annapolis Senior Activity Center. I'm here at the Annapolis Senior Activity Center Mardi Gras party with Martha Thorne and Helen Sharps, who are decked out in their Mardi Gras gear. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about your costume, Martha? Um, well, um, my top is from Brazil. And then my mast is from um, the St. Anne's Episcopal Church. Um, they had an event there and they had mast. And Helen, you're looking very festive today. What about your costume? Thank you. Uh, my hat, I mean, my mask and my umbrella is from, originally from New Orleans, and my outfit I made myself. Oh, wow. Very, very fancy. I love it. Even down to the purple socks. You look wonderful. <laughs> and Martha, can you tell us a little bit about the event today? Um, well, it's just a chance to get together and party, and after all the snow that we've had earlier this month, I, I think we're ready for a party. And last month and the month before that and the month before That's that. That's right. We're, we're ready. And Helen, can you tell us what do you like about Mardi Gras? Uh, I like the colors because I can coordinate my colors and I have them already, and I enjoy um, partying with Annapolis Senior Center when they had the Mardi Gras and whoever has a Mardi Gras enjoyed a Mardi Gras also went to a Mardi Gras festival a Red Hatters had in Baltimore in February. Well thank you so much we look to forward to seeing some more some good entertainment by the Senior Center members and some good Mardi Gras music in the background. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Go march in and hang down, take your oh, When the saints go march in, oh Lord, I want to be in the number. Oh, when the saints go march in. Gary, was there? Well, I am here with Mike and Mike, who are providing some impromptu entertainment today. Uh, Mike already got up there on stage and sang when the Saints go marching in, and now I guess we have a comedy review coming up, so I will turn it over to Mike and Mike. Okay. Hey, Mike, give me five. Hey, Mike, how are you? Give me five. Good to see you. Okay, good to see you, buddy. Oh, I got a question for you, Mike. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know the answer to this or not. Do you Try know me what, out. Try do, me out. Do you know what the capital of Maryland is? Sure do. Big M. Ah, ha, 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 Capital M. Maryland. 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 Big M. Got to have here. that capital in there. And we love it in Annapolis. You don't we have really, the capital, it's no good. You got to be the capital. Okay, seriously. Well, on, on a more serious note, Mike's. Can you tell us why you like coming to the center? Uh, the food. Yeah, free food. No, it's not. I'm kidding. It's not really free. But it's uh, the, um, what would you say, Michael? I would say it's probably the um, camaraderie, the I would use the word type. ambience. The word ambience, the whole That's gestalt. A That's a sleeping no, drug. No, no, no. You know, I'm doing the jokes here. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, the whole gestalt, the whole being of people who are in the same boat, basically, if you're rich or poor, we're all the same here, we're all the same in life. And we want to try to cheer each other up and make each other happy. And that's why I'm here. And we, we were all kids in the 60s, so that says a lot, doesn't it? I mean that... Well, if you remember the 60s, you weren't there. Or you were there. Woodstock, I don't know. I, don't, <laughs> I, don't remember. I have no memory of the 60s Woodstock, at all. Woodstock. Seven years just uh, yeah. out of my mind. But. Um, but I'm happy to be here, and it's a wonderful place, really, seriously. And I want to invite everybody who might be watching this, if you're past 55, I guess, please come, and you'll make new friends. You can play backgammon. I have a friend I play backgammon with. You can play cards. You can play uh, uh, 500 rummy. If you don't know, I want to play bridge. Bridge is, you have to be smart to play bridge. But they play bridge here. A lot of people play bridge here on Thursdays. There's all kinds of wonderful activities. Actually, I'm taking Mandarin Chinese on Tuesday and Thursdays, and I'm so happy to be learning a new language because I never could learn a language when I was younger, just different reasons. But now I have the time to learn Chinese. So I say, Ni hao, Ni hao ma. 
Hi, how are you? Shay Shay. Thank you. Oh, Shay okay. Shay, thank you. I do not know Mandarin Chinese. Okay. Well, I think it's a wonderful thing to be able to, and the teacher is really excellent. And it's a small class, but we're welcome to have more people. And uh, just to keep your mind alert, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, I play backhand with a man who's in his 80s, late 80s, and he beats me some most of the time, to be honest. And it's just a great place. And if it, I come here every, uh, just about every day, and I invite other people to come here in their own convenience. The parking is easy. If you live anywhere near this place, it's great. Yeah. All right. it's, it's also the most segregated uh, thing, place in Annapolis. And by segregation, I mean, uh, I, I, well, no, I, I You mean that. integrated? I mean integrated. It's the most integrated place in Annapolis. And by that, I mean, there's people from all walks of life. Um, uh, there's black folks, there's white folks, there's, you know, you name it. They're here. And the one thing they all have in common is uh, we're oldsters, you know. Uh, and by oldsters, I mean anybody over 55 years old, which doesn't seem like so old anymore. But, but it's really a wonderful place to meet people, to meet new people, to meet people that you would normally be outside your comfort zone, perhaps. Uh, but every, you, you really give them a chance, and, and everybody gets along great. Uh, and there's this real feeling of community and uh, goodwill. Well, there you go. So come on down, hang out with the mics, learn a language, have some lunch. <laughs> if these two didn't sell it for you, I don't know what can. Thank you so much, Thank fellas. You. You're quite welcome. Thank you, fellas. I'm here with Alma, Sylvia, and Jean. And we're here at the Annapolis Senior Activity Center Mardi Gras party. I have quite a colorful group with me. Can you tell us, Alma, why do you like celebrating Mardi Gras? I like to celebrate Mardi Gras because um, it's fun. You can dress in all crazy colors. You can act crazy. You can just have a good time, even though, you know, a lot of people don't enjoy the holiday because they think it's just a little too wild. But it's all in fun. It's definitely all in fun. You know, you can be yourself. And Sylvia, you're, you're the queen of the Annapolis Senior Activity Center Mardi Gras party, it looks like here. <laughs> can you tell us what you like celebrating? I just like celebrating with the persons that are here. I'm glad to get to participate a little. I probably come more often to the Annapolis Senior Center. It's a great opportunity to just come out and see friends that you haven't seen in a while, that you might have gone to school with, or something of that nature, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm glad I came today. Jean. <laughs> and Jean's looking at me like she doesn't want to answer, but Jean, can you just tell us, why do you like coming to the Senior Center in general? Oh, uh, Besides I, the staff. I, just, I just enjoy coming to the Center. I volunteer over here at the Center also, and come to the classes, like exercise class and mind alert class. I just enjoy coming over here and mingling with the people here. It's just fun, fun, fun. <laughs> All right, well, thank you ladies so much. It looks like the snacks are coming out. Oh, Alma. Okay, I just want to say that I volunteer too and I do attend class. And today was the day that I met my classmate. I hadn't seen Sylvia in a long time. So it was good to see her again and to see Miss Jean because I hadn't seen her in a while. But like I always say, if you come to the Senior Center, there's a lot of different things for you to do. You know, uh, and you get to meet uh, all types of people, friends and people that you don't know. You know, get to meet new friends and, and see the old ones too. It's a durable experience. And I invite everyone to come. You know, don't feel old. We do young things and it's, it's very nice. So, you know, we welcome you all. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day. Well, we see the snacks are coming out and the uh, non-alcoholic margaritas anyway, so we will let you ladies get to it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Looks like everyone had a great time. Well, from Annapolis, we followed the party north to the Arnold Senior Activity Center and chatted with the Craw Daddies, who provided the day's entertainment.
Well, we're here at the Arnold Senior Activity Center Mardi Gras party, and here are the Howlin' Mudbugs. We have Chris and Craig, who on this pretty gloomy, almost spring day, made us feel like we were all in New Orleans. You guys were fantastic today. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank now, you. can you tell us a little bit about the music today? Yeah, we are uh, kind of a hybrid version of uh, Roots and Cajun and Zydeco, a little bit of blues mixed in. Uh, of course, we kind of lean heavily towards the Zydeco with the accordion in the group. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of New Orleans flavor stuff. Now, Craig, I heard you were together. The Howlin' Mudbugs have been together now for 17 years? Uh, the Crawdaddies. Me and Chris have been together for 17 years. Um, something like that. And the Howlin' Mudbugs is actually, uh, well, me and Chris, and then me and Chris and Dan, a uh, bass player. So it kind of depends on the situation, what... You know, Chris, and Chris owns an a booking agency called Head On Entertainment, and uh, he kind of sends out different things depending on the situation. Mm -hmm. And Chris, you said the Crawdaddies tour all throughout the country? Yep, yeah, we go all over the place. We just came back from a New England tour up to Maine and back, mm -hmm. and uh, we play all over the place. Most of our stuff is during the summertime, so if you look around on our, our, the Crawdaddies calendar, is on thecrawdaddies.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, we play a lot of concert series stuff and festival things. Any upcoming exciting shows this spring and summer? Oh, yeah, we got all kinds of stuff. We're probably going to be going back to Artscape in Baltimore for local stuff. We're going to be down at uh, the Avenue at White Marsh mm -hmm. uh, for the concert series down there. Ladue Gardens are up every Father's Day. We're the, we're the band out there. So mm -hmm. yeah, every Father's, Father's Day at Ladue Gardens is, is a traditional one for us. We've been doing it for years now, mm -hmm. probably 12 years. And uh, we're all over the place. Best thing to do is to catch up on the calendar or our Facebook page. We post it, post all our shows on there. Okay. And once again, can you tell us that website, Craig, and tell everybody how to find out more about your bands? Uh, the website is www.thecrawdaddies.com. Also, make sure you get that T-H-E in there. You're going to get something like a bar in Pittsburgh or something. It's thecrawdaddies.com. And just look at it. It's got this pretty interesting website. Uh, we've got some people that do it. Uh, Kim Shapiro and my wife actually. Well, Matt, Kim Shapiro manages the website, and it's my wife put it together, and it's pretty cool. It's got all kinds of stuff on it, you know, dates and times and bios and pictures of the band and things through the years, and it's pretty nice. It really is. Well, thank you both so much for coming down to Arnold today and for playing some very festive and fun music. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for keeping the party jumping, guys. Well, you can't have a party without food, and Maryland has a very interesting culinary history. We're all familiar with our steam crabs, natty bow, and burger cookies, but did you know that Maryland was also known for dishes such as muskrat and terrapin? Well, food historian Joyce White is at the Pascal Senior Activity Center to discuss Maryland's food history and offer members some of the tasty treats. Thanks for being with us today, Joyce. Can you start us off by telling us a little bit about your presentation at the center? Um, today I'm doing a program called A Taste of Maryland, which is a food history presentation. It's one of the many different food history presentations I do. This one in particular was uh, built a, around an exhibit that I'm curating for the Southern Food and Beverage Museum in New, New Orleans, and that's going to be opening in the next year or so. So each state's get, being, being given a huge amount of space to exhibit its food traditions. So I got the chance to do all the food traditions in Maryland, and it's an ongoing project. It will probably never actually be done, but I thought it would be fun to take the, some of the information uh, which I gathered and present it to people in Maryland, not just senior centers, but you know whoever wants to have me come and talk to them, libraries, uh, museums, other organizations, so it's been a great opportunity. Well, you talked about many different dishes native to the area, but one in particular was surprising since we all know that terrapin is now the state reptile. So how did people prepare and serve terrapin? Terrapin was um, traditionally roasted over coals and then eaten just ro as roasted meat, but uh, over the years it became a delicacy and it was served in restaurants primarily as a stew or a soup and it was laced with cream or sherry and it was made um, and served for elaborate occasions. It could be served every day. It was really um, sort of a universal food. If you look at cookbooks from the middle of the 20th century too, like Helen Avalyn Taws, who was the governor's wife in the 1940s, she often served terrapin soup to special guests to government house in Annapolis. So it became really a big part of Maryland food tradition. Also something people may not be familiar with is muskrat. 
People usually associate them with fur coats, but not as food. Uh, personally, I haven't eaten muskrat myself, but there is a very big tradition of muskrat skinning and muskrat contests in on the eastern shore. Every year there is a contest um, near uh, Cambridge, Maryland, and uh, traditionally the muskrat was hunted for its pelt, but also the meat could be eaten during the Depression when money and food was scarce for a lot of people, so it became an uh, perfect way to get both cash and food on the table. Now Joyce, in your program you mentioned everything from cornbread to Smith Island cake and burger cookies and how those foods relate to Maryland. Can you tell us a little bit more about how these foods impacted Maryland economically? Well, when you look at Maryland and Virginia, uh, the Chesapeake region in particular, and you look at the history of it as a tobacco uh, culture, um, you see that uh, foods like cornbreads and beaten biscuits, uh, corn in particular, were very important to the economy as a food source because the tobacco demanded so much time and attention from the growers that they really didn't want to put a lot of effort into growing their food. And after the the famine and the, the deaths at Jamestown in 1607, it became vitally important that in order to settle other colonies and have cash crops, you absolutely had to have a food source, a reliable food source. And so while they had to give over time for a food source, they didn't want to waste it doing wheat because wheat was a little bit uh, more finicky and needed to uh, have more care and needed to be harvested on a regular cycle. Whereas corn could, could kind of hang out, wait until the planters were ready to pick it, could dry in the fields, and it would be just as good as the first day it was ready. So it really became a perfect food for tobacco growers to have. It all sounds like a very interesting project, and we wish you the best of luck with it. So thank you so much for joining us today, Joyce. Thanks very much. And if you'd like to find out more about Joyce White's program, visit www.atasteofhistory.net. Well, even if you don't hail from Ireland, we all have a little Irish in us on St. Patrick's Day. And several of our senior activity centers celebrated with the wearing of the green. I visited the Arnold Senior Activity Center to enjoy the sounds of thirst and howl, and we spoke with the members of the group after their performance. Well, we're here at the Arnold Senior Activity Center for the annual St. Patrick's Day party, and the festivities are already going on. As you can hear behind me, there's cookies, there's punch, and there's live entertainment with Thurston Howell. So let's go check it out. I love sweet Rosie O'Grady, and Rosie O'Grady loves me. I love sweet Rosie O'Grady. Well, we're here at the Arnold Senior Activity Center St. Patrick's Day party and here we have Thurston Howell, Thad, Debbie, Heidi, and Clay and they've entertained us today. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of Thurston Howell? Uh, Debbie actually started. Oh, no, okay. uh, I started Thurston Howell, I'm one of the co-founders in 2003 with another performer who's around the area, Ellis Woodward. And uh, when asked, well, what do we call ourselves? He put out a list of names, and uh, he had one there, Thurston Howe. He was a Gilligan's Island fan. <laughs> clearly. So clearly so. We became Thurston Howe Musical Productions. But it's Thirst, T-H-I-R-S-T. -I Correct, yes. Thirst. <laughs> and we, we specifically like to visit senior centers because we do musical memory hours so that we can bring back memories and share with them songs that they know that they don't hear all the time, as well as learn from them and give them an opportunity opportunity to share memories. Yes, well, I've, I've heard that the longest memories that stay with you are music that you've heard in your lifetime. Absolutely. For sure, yeah. And these folks are singing along today, which is really nice. We, we sing in a, another group. Some of us met singing at Christmas carols with Joyous Voices. And that's an acapella group that started a long time ago. And we a lot of times sing at uh, nursing homes. And, and some people, uh, are there, they're not as uh, uh, active as these people. 
and uh, some of them have Alzheimer's. But it's funny, it, you're right, the last, the last thing that they remember is music. If you sing some song that they knew ever since they were a child, that they will connect with, that they will remember and sing along. And Thad, you shared with us that you're Irish and you told some of your stories. How did you all decide to uh, kind of branch out from Christmas carols and sing Irish music as well? Well, I will have to say that I am the newest member of the group. So I just joined the group to sing the Irish songs. And uh, so I can't tell you a whole lot about that. I can only say for myself that I'm, a, I'm just a quarter Irish. I won't say which quarter. <laughs> <laughs> and Clay, what do you like best about being part of Thurston Howell? Like best? Singing with these lovely people, of course. Yes. And to entertain the folks. Um, gets me out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and finally, Debbie, I understand that you have some interesting events coming up. Yes, uh, we are actually planning for 2015 at this point. Uh, that is the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II. So we'll be putting together musical programs, including a quartet of those famous 1940s big band songs that folks like to enjoy. So we look forward to getting that on the road and visiting senior centers as well. Yeah, we look forward to seeing you in 2015. Hopefully you'll come back. And thank you so much for stopping by today to entertain us all. Thank you. Thank you. And now we'll head south to both the Annapolis and South County Senior Activity Centers to check out the parties there. Thank you, Carla. We're here at the Annapolis Senior Activity Center. The Retro Rockets are playing for our St. Patrick's Day celebration. And we're having a great time uh, dancing, um, singing along, clapping, just having a really great time. Now we're going to head over to the South County uh, Senior Center to check on their St. Patrick's Day celebration. Thank you, Martha. We're here at South County Senior Center enjoying the sounds of Thurston Howe. Everyone's dancing and having a great time. Will I play the wild rover? No, never. No, that's pretty good, actually, man. That's more than I thought you were going to do. Ten sovereigns bright, and the landlady's eyes opened wide with delight. She said, I have whiskey and wines of the best, and the words that I spoke sure were only in jest, and it's no day never. No day never. Everyone had a great time at the party. Well, the February snow delayed the games at the playground at the Annapolis Senior Activity Center, but everyone turned out in March in full force to compete in share volleyball, basketball toss, the home run derby, and a very spirited game of hot potato. We talked with director Becky Bata and some of the participants afterward. I'm here with Becky Bata, the director of the Annapolis Senior Activity Center and also the director of Senior Center Operations now at the Anne Arundel County Department of Aging and Disabilities at the annual games at the playground. Is that right, Becky? Yes, yes. this is our, our first time doing this. So that's what okay. we call it, games at the playground, because the Senior Center, they, they call it their playground. <laughs> 
Got it. And now can you tell us about some of the games today? There's basketball going on behind us. We had chair volleyball. Yes, we got the, um, the basketball, which is the shoot off, the most points wins. Um, we're also going to try a football toss, which is new. We did the beach volleyball, which we've done several times prior. Um, we also have a home run derby type thing with a t-ball set, and the most home runs get a prize also. <laughs> so I think, I think that's everything. Yes. <laughs> and how did you come up with the idea for the game? It just, we, one year we had an Olympics and we were trying to think of events to have for the seniors uh, that was in, inside, well, and actually it was outside also at that time. And the beach ball volleyball was one of the events. <laughs> Start. I know that's one of the favorite events for you here. Yes, it is a lot of fun. A lot of, a lot of trash talking. And <laughs> they have a really good time. Well, it seems like a good opportunity for everyone to be active, you know, and have fun at the yes, same time. Exactly. It's a lot of fun. All right. Well, let's get back to the games. Thank you, Becky. Thank you. Oh, I was like, why is he in the middle? <laughs> Monkey in the middle. That's go. Ah, you. So we're here at the Annapolis Senior Activity Center for the rescheduled but just as exciting games at the playground. And with me is Sharon and Geraldine, who were part of the winning team for Cherry Volleyball, Team Annapolis. Uh, Sharon, can you tell us a little bit about your team strategy and how you came on top today? Um, we just try to do everything to win, but sometimes the other team just really beats us. It's a lot of fun, and you should try to come out and join us when we have the next beach volleyball. And when is that going to be? Do you know? Um, it is probably going to be sometime during the summer. Mm -hmm. It will be in our newsletter when we have it. Okay. And Geraldine, can you tell us about some of the other events going on today? Um, I don't know all the events. events. They, all I know, they have a lot of games. Mm -hmm. They come play um, basketball. And I don't know what else they come play. Uh -huh. I'm just here to play them all. <laughs> well, you did very well. Can you tell us uh, what you like about today? I like playing um, volleyball and basketball, but I don't know what else they're going to play. But um, we have a lot of fun doing it. All right. Well, thank you ladies so much and congratulations once again on your victory. Okay, thank you. thank you. All of the winners received medals and everyone had refreshments afterwards. This senior center was definitely in action. Well, that wraps things up for this month. If you'd like more information about the events and programs at our senior activity centers, log on to www.aacounty.org aging or give us a call at 410-222-4464 to find a senior activity center near you. We'll end the show with another performance by Thurston Howell at the Paschal Senior Activity Center's St. Patrick's Day concert. And we hope to see you again next month. Over in July, many years ago, me mother sang a song to me in tongues of sweet and low, just a simple little ditty in a good old Irish way, and I knew well she could sing the song to me this day. To Thank you.